guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another ESL podcast. I'm your host, Sonny O, as usual, and today is an amazing, very slow ba- uh, breakdown, excuse me, if you will, of the academic writing. Now, after yesterday's absolute rant field about the scam artists of ETS, man, I had to get back into my groove. I got to get back into uh, the TOEFL, and I need to stop worrying so much about things that I cannot control. But boy, that had to be had, and it was. So let's dive into this. So I got a new student today, I need it. He has a lot of grammatical errors in his writing. And so I had to start him off on one of my pre-intermediate grammar courses, as well as the writing skills. And I said, okay, listen, you're gonna be practicing that, and this isn't about just doing the work, it's about applying what you learned within the course. So, this is a very slow, the slowest breakdown of the academic essay I've ever done. So, I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, go to uh, my YouTube, my Facebook page, or even my IG, or even ask me through IG. Hey, I would love to have the video. Do you have a view link only from Canva, et cetera, et cetera? I got you, and I'm there for you. So, with that being said, people, let's dive in. Oh, anyway, okay, so here we go, Wellinger. I'm going to walk you through this process. I'm going to do a whole bunch. And I'm going to show you different types of academic writings and different approaches and making sure that you maximize your grammar. It's kind of like I'm teaching you grammar through my courses, but I'm also teaching you a system that you can apply. And so by applying the system and doing it repeatedly, you're going to be able to get better because... The grammar, the overall grammar, it's like, it's not that I'm, te- I'm not like coaching you in English. I'm coaching you on how to pass a test. But at the same time, I'm going to need you to say, okay, Arsenio, this is exactly what I'm going to write in the first sentence, right? Okay, gotcha. So this is exactly what we're going to be doing. So here we go. Okay. What we have here is you already know how this works, right? Me, there are two proposals. Aha. So I posted on my IG in regards to how to do proposals, but it's all good. Let's go through this. Governments can consider as they try to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from cars. One proposal is to improve and expand public transportation. The other is to provide financial support to companies that make electric cars and to consumers who buy them. Which proposal do you think is better? When I read this question, I immediately go to what is happening in this country. Now, it's very difficult because you live in America and you guys, and especially in, you know, out there in Florida, there is no pollution. You're fucking lucky. (laughs) You got these beautiful (laughs) blue skies and these gorgeous clouds. I took that shit for granted when I lived in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, we had some of the most extraordinary sunsets imaginable. Problem is, oh. now that I live in Thailand, I just see fucking, it, it seems like I'm in a doomsday, like in Mad Max Fury, okay? I'm in like Mad Max, the movie Mad Max, where it just seems like I'm in a big fucking dust storm all the time. So, wow. I immediately apply this to my life. And I say, okay, expand public transportation. They're expanded public transportation right now, but it's still too expensive for the majority of the public. Because there's not a one card you could you could go through all the different lines. No, every line, the six different lines are owned privately. Therefore, you're going to have to pay for each line in full price. Wow. So to get from one location to another, it's going to cost $10. And if people are only getting paid 300 USD a month, it's it's inadequate. People are still going to drive their motherfucking cars, okay? This isn't like Australia or Singapore where there's massive road tax, right? Wow. EV, that's another thing that's going to be a little bit difficult to speak about. All right, so if we look at this, the other is to provide financial support to companies that make electric cars and to consumers who buy them. All right, financial support for EV. Now, in America, they don't have these EV cars right now. Uh, right, uh, right now, but I'd like to say that Thai- China is Thailand's daddy. Okay, the amount of corruption that happens between the two countries is substantial, and I say that because there are uh, there are EV automakers, about five of them, who have made their way into this country, and they are only a fifth of the price 
of what a Tesla is. So you could buy an EV vehicle in this country for about 13,000 USD. But the Teslas are about 60,000 USD. Wow. <laughs> so a lot of difference. And you see, it's a huge difference. So a lot of people are just going to say, fuck yeah, I'm going Chinese. But these Chinese EV vehicles, they're copycats, right? And so what I'm trying to do is when I think and when I read the question, I think of, okay, public transportation. Okay, this is going to be pretty big, but there still is a lingering problem out here in Thailand. Oh, I could still use it as an example and just at the end talk about the affordability of it making it more affordable for people, building more parking garages at each station so people can commute within the city. Now, we look at a couple of these students. We have Claire and we have Paul. Now, okay. she said, I think improving public transportation would be a beneficial for our tax breaks. I don't care about tax breaks. I don't care about rebates. If taking a train or a bus is significantly easier, cheaper, and faster than driving a car, more people will use it. So what should they do? And this would result in less air pollution. Obviously, that's going to be the easiest thing. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Now, am I going to read, Paul, in terms of electric car manufacturers? I feel like it's going to be more difficult for me to come up with the idea, so forget it. So what happened here? Okay, there's a lot of different things that I'm going to explain to you here. All right? This is like one big explanation. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back to this same question, and I'm going to show you exactly how we could break it down. So here we go. If we actually look at these things, right? First and foremost, vocabulary. Some of my students have worries, and they say, oh my God, Rosenio, but I don't have the vocab. I don't have the vocab. I don't have the vocab. What am I supposed to do? I don't have the vocab. Hey, come on, come on, come on. When it comes to the writing, <laughs> we already have the vocabulary. Why? Well, carbon dioxide emissions expand. Provide financial support. Pollution. Different things that are related to pollution. I just created a podcast in terms of bud words that those words that I just read out, we can use synonyms and words that are relative to those words. You don't have to have a massive vocabulary to get a four in which our goal is to, well, a three from our perspective right now in terms of getting that academic writing. Also, Signific uh, significantly easier, cheaper, faster, less air pollution, okay? Pollutes, that's another, that's a verb. Pollution is a noun. These are the different vocabulary terms that we could use, right? Number two, you don't have to come up with an idea from the top of your head. You could just expand on what a student like Claire or Paul had already said. Right. Some of my students are like, I don't know what to write. Well, the more specific you are, the better. You already have the idea from one of those students. So you grab that idea and then you are going to expand on that idea. Right now, okay. specificity is the most important. Being okay. specific is by far the most important, because if you are not specific, the less the score it is. The more specific you are, the better. So I want you to immediately think about Venezuela because it's easy to speak about Venezuela. So again, I don't know if Venezuela is affected so much from pollution and all that stuff and traffic. I highly doubt it. I may be wrong. Rio de Janeiro is affected massively by traffic, right? Yeah. But when it comes to obviously... Um, Venezuelan stuff, I'm not sure, pollution from Amazon or this or the car pollution and all this is affected. But I want you to speak about things that you've heard, that you've seen, that you've spoken about, that you've read about, all that using your senses to formulate your entire academic writing, right? And so this is a proposal method. So what I'm going to do, I only have a minute and 45 seconds. So I'm just going to X that out. I'm going to go back to question number nine. And now, I'm going to go over all the structure with you. All right, okay. so here we go. Let's see what we got here. Now, the first sentence is our thesis. It's our topic sentence is what they would teach me back in high school before I went to college. This is you laying the foundation and stating your stance. So we're going to use a subordinating conjunction. 
while I do understand both points of view made by the students. Now, this is exactly the structure that you're going to have to use. We have plenty and an ample amount of time, okay, for okay. you to use this over and over so that it sticks. We have a plentiful amount of time, okay? And it's because you're going to be taking the test next year, right? Now, by using these structures or using what people would always say about two years ago as templates, it's going to reduce the amount of errors you have with what? Your grammar. That's the biggest problem, right? The grammar is obviously the biggest problem. So if we can use this and maximize this, the only thing that you're really going to have to focus on are the three sentences that are going to follow after this. All right. So <clears throat> while I do understand boy, both points of view, I'm sorry, both points of view, both point of view, both points of views. What the hell? I'm confused. While I do understand <laughs> both points of view made by the students. There we go. I agree with Claire that improving public transportation let me stop right there okay now claire i misspelled her name who gives a damn okay it's like an eclair i think that's that french dessert all right and so what i have up here <clears throat> i grabbed some of the vocabulary in the first line of her little write-up improving okay. public transportation make it easier for yourself it's always good to grab a couple of words and a few words, you know, in this instance, so that you can expand on the, uh, you don't have to come up with so many different vocabularies, right? Okay, that improving public tra transportation would be, would have the most positive impact on the environment. Done. That is your introductory sentence. It's a subordinate okay. clause with a stance stating who you agree with and why. And it's kind of like a supporting detail, too, because I'm talking about improving public transportation, positive impact on the environment. So, Wellinger, what is my idea going to be about? What's my example going to be about? Uh, improving public transportation is the principal right. idea. And then the result of that is less pollution, positive for the environment. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So this is your opening introductory sentence. So what you have to do, one, you're always going to use the subordinate clause acknowledging both of the students. While I do understand both points of view made by the students, you're always going to use that no matter what. Okay? Comma. Okay. I agree with Claire. This is where you put a comma, and in the next clause, you're going to state your stance and who you agree with. I agree with Claire. I agree with Paul. That improving, you're going to take the general idea of what the person has said. See, over here, Paul said financial support to electric car manufacturers. Claire talks about improving, improving public transpo, uh, transportation, and in her conclusion is less air pollution. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for, okay, after you, I agree with Claire that relative pronoun, and then you're going to take her main idea and slot it in right there, okay? That improving tr public transportation. And then it's the result of doing this. So by improving this, this is the positive result. Would okay. have the most positive impact on the environment. Now, for example, this is how you're always going to start it off. Linkers are very impactful in making sure you have that cohesion and that coherence that creates that logic that goes from an upside down pyramid all the way down this way. This is what our goal is, okay? And so the thing is, I'm gonna have to think about Thailand, but I'm gonna have to take out the whole expensive thing, right? I'm gonna be like, okay, the reality is that public transportation is very expensive, 
But just look at it from a positive aspect and probably do a comparison contrast to what Thailand used to be with ridiculous air pollution to what it is now with an additional four lines and less air pollution. Bullshit. <laughs> Tip number one, these motherfuckers and the AI tech have no idea what the hell is true and what's not true. OK, the mm -hmm. AI tech has no idea what is true and what is not true. So your goal is to just go. All right. So here we go. For example, in in the past or, you know, in, I'm sorry, in Bangkok, Thailand, pollution used to be unbelievably bad because there were not there were not alternative modes of transportation let alone less trains now what did i say Hello. here i said in bangkok pollution was really bad in the past because there weren't alternative modes of transportation Everyone had to use their cars. Okay. So now I'm going to contrast that. I'm doing a comparison and contrast here. So I stated what it used to be and what it is now. However, because now I'm going to go back to what Claire had said, because public transportation has been improved in regards to adding a significant amount of trains that extend from the outer suburbs to the inner city whoa, 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 whoa. okay you're like our city oh my god that is so much that is so much ay 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 city what is all this vocabulary okay so what i'm doing here my first example is pollution bangkok sucked ass However, there are an additional four or five lines, another five lines that are going to be built. Now, to be honest with you, is that going to help with pollution? Not really. Motherfuckers are still going to drive their cars. There are still some dirty ass trucks out on that road belching out those black ass, that, that horrible black smoke. All right. There's nothing we could do. Listen, well, you're, we are fucked out here. Okay, but comment. Okay. Uh, okay. Comment. 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 <laughs> but. The AI tech doesn't know that. The motherfucking Indians don't know that. <laughs> okay, so let me focus on here. Now, pollution has decreased significantly in the last decade because people are using the train more often than before. So I grab pollution, decrease significantly, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I believe that I used a past and a present. I compare both of them, and now I believe that I'm able to put the therefore because I'm already at 96 words. So then I'm gonna go here. Yeah. Therefore, by improving transportation, by uh, what well, uh, what is it? By uh, what is it? By improving transportation. Fuck that. Okay. The overall environment and air quality can be improved by adding electric trains, and this would also be a cheaper way to commute to the city. Done. Now, I'm going to take a photo. Don't worry. I'm going to be sending this to you, uh, right? I don't know who this is. Oh my God! Tomorrow. Okay, in this okay. case, it is it's grammar one. What was that? This is this okay. this exercise is the grammar one, correct? That's right. Okay, it's the most important is the specification in the example. Specification in the example, let alone for you the structure, so that you don't make so many grammatical errors. You're going to okay. have to execute this structure on a consistent basis over and over and over. So you're able to obviously get a high score. So because the goal for you, like I said, when I used to have IELTS students back in 2015, 2016, I said, listen, I'm not here to teach you English. I'm here 
to coach you on passing a test. Now, mm-hmm. I give you different things that could help you, but overall, it may or may not help you. I'm going to help you as much as I can in terms of coaching you. That mindset that you know exactly how to execute. As you can see here, I got a five in the academic discussion. Okay. I wrote literally four sentences. And guys, that is the end of this marvelous podcast. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to be doing a lot of business English and case studies coming up all next week, especially. Want to get back into that groove because I know a lot of you have missed those types of podcasts and you guys don't always want to listen to TOEFL, TOEFL, TOEFL. Oh my God, it could be so much, right? It could be so annoying, right? Got to give you guys more. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So thanks for tuning into this one. Follow me on IG and I'll see you guys in the next round over and out.